and welcome back to another video. So today I have yet another weird DIY project in the works. I was scrolling through TikTok the other day and came across a video of this girl's apartment and I can't find the video for the life of me but she had one of these mushroom ottomans and I immediately knew that I needed to either DIY it or buy it. I did some investigating and I wasn't surprised to find out that they are kind of expensive. I kept coming across two sizes. One that was a footstool size and one that was an ottoman size. So I'm going to try and DIY both sizes. Usually when I'm looking for material for a project like this, I like to start by looking around my house and seeing if there's anything that I already own and have that I could either repurpose or use for the project. And then I will go to thrift stores or secondhand and see what I can find there. And then last but not least, I'll go to chain stores or hardware stores. The first thing I'm gonna think about is the base for both ottomans. It needs to be something sturdy that I can also upholster easily with staples. The easiest and most obvious option is to find used ottomans and then convert them, but it might be hard to find the right size that I need. So let's Let's start by going thrifting and see what we can find. So the first step is going to be cutting the foam to size and I just laid out the wood and traced it with chalk and then I cut it out with a serrated knife. Not gonna lie, using a knife or scissors for this project is going to be time consuming. There are tools that are designed specifically for cutting foam or you could use a turkey slicer, but this is just what I had laying around uh, so it's what I'm gonna use. <laughs> After cutting out the two circles, I wanted to test and see if the height was right for the mushroom size that I wanted. And really, you can customize this project to whatever you want. So if you want them more flat or more rounded, it's kind of up to you. But I ended up using about six inches of height of foam for the big one and about four inches for the small one. Then I started trimming the edges to create that mushroom shape. And I would really recommend gluing the foam to the wood and the foam together before starting this process. But honestly, my friend was borrowing my hot glue gun and I'm impatient, so I just started, but it definitely would have been helpful to have them all glued together. I traced a circle in the center as a guide for where I wanted my slope to start, and then I just started shaving off the edges. Now this part doesn't have to look perfect because all of those little tiny lumps are going to be smoothed over when we cover it with Dacron. I used a total of two yards of Dacron for both of these combined and I just did one layer on the small one and I did two layers on the big one to help cover any imperfections from the carving that I did. You can kind of decide how many layers you want to put on. The more you do, the comfier the cushion's going to be. I really wanted this ottoman to be able to open and close and still be functional as storage. So I took the top of the original ottoman and pried off this bottom piece. 
It was really easy to take off with a flathead screwdriver and then I measured out the center of the new top and simply just hammered it back in with the nails that it came with. I had this funny little basket laying around and it had this fabric insert. So I just took that out and put it into the new plastic piece. This step is pretty unnecessary, but I just thought it'd be a nice touch if somebody were to turn it over and see the underneath. It wouldn't just be a plastic container. So um, then I went ahead and stapled the fabric on. I did do a misstep here and I stapled all of this uh, a little bit prematurely and you will see why here in a second when I attach this bottom piece to the top part of the mushroom. My plan was to put a couple screws through the bottom of this to attach it, but because I put the fabric already, you can see the screws and the fabric kind of wraps around the screws, making it hard to insert them. If I could go back, I would staple the fabric after the fact, but you know, we live and we learn. I don't think I've ever done a DIY project where I haven't regretted one of the decisions involved, so it's just part of the process. 